Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Mateo. Welcome to my home here in Houston. Cannot wait to show you around. Come on in. I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Matthew Harris, the designer of Mateo New York, and you're here in my Houston home. So I moved back from Luxembourg in 2019 after a long stint in Europe and I was searching for a home. Covid came and I've always loved Houston so I took a little road trip down to Houston, came and saw a few properties, lost the first property that I put in an offer for due to the seller pulling back not wanting to sell the property and my realtor said to me come and look at this last house. The moment I came through the door I immediately knew it. The the floor to ceiling, double height, living room, just blew my mind away. Sure, it was dated and a bit aged and in old Texan fashion, um, but I knew the bones were just fantastic. So I bought the house and completely gut renovated it. I mean, there were bars everywhere. There was a gas fireplace everywhere. I got rid of all of that and then made it, you know, a very modern, relaxing and welcoming home. Welcome to my foyer. Um, as you can see, it's quite quaint. And I decided to really open up the space because when I bought this house, we had these old farmhouse banisters and it just really made the space feel so compact. But as you can tell now with the new modern touches, it really just opens up the space and give it a breath of fresh air. There's a beautiful light sculpture in the ceiling by Michael Anastadides, a Spanish lighting designer. And this piece is called the arrangement. You can choose whichever configuration you'd like um, and you can add as many pieces as you'd like. I've always wanted this piece. So the moment I could save my coins to get it, I definitely went for it. And I think it just is a great conversation piece when you walk in. Um, I also went with a, you know, a, a frameless banister because um, we're grown adults and I don't have kids. I know everyone is always concerned about falling off, but I think it's just a beautiful architectural touch. And we also went with these beautiful wide oak planks for the staircase, which I absolutely adore. And then we added this beautiful quartz inlay for a modern touch. I really just love the entry, and I think the entry of a house should, be, should just be welcoming and warm. I, I don't know, I just love it. <laughs> I really do. Um, it really makes me happy once I walk in. To the left of the foyer is the dining room and I will now show you. Welcome to my dining room. Um, it's kind of a room filled with pop colors. Very modern, a vintage Leon Rosen table that I got in Atlanta while I was on a trip. And I've always, I've been watching actually this table on first dibs for so long went to Atlanta and found it on a deal. I think I paid nothing for it. Changed the tabletop and did a larger glass on top and I'm, I have my beautiful Christoffel egg that we just love to present at dinner because <laughs> everyone is always wondering where's the silverware. But it's all here. There's an Ethan Cook piece of art here that my dealer sent over. 
it's not even a painting, it's actually hand-woven canvas to create this piece. Very modern, very minimal. My mom forced me to add color in the house. So this was the first injection of color. The light sculpture is a mobile by Angel Monbieru, who is also another Spanish designer, and it's called, it's a mobile inspired by Alexander Calder. Um, as you could tell, I love Alexander Calder's work. There's also another mobile sitting here on this pedestal. And this is by Volta in Paris, which is also produced in Spain. For some reason, there, it seems as if I have a lot of Spanish creations <laughs> in this house. Um, but no, this is the dining room, and it's so simple and minimal. And I love a brutalist chair, so everyone makes fun of my chairs because they, you know, they're really a work of art. They're like sculptures. And I like a chair that's a bit punishing, if, if I must say. So they're quite sturdy and hard, but I think it's the perfect touch for the dining room. And you sit, you sit upright in these chairs, which I love. Um, again, they're quite punishing, but a beautiful touch to a, a very modern and minimal, but cozy dining room. You know, for dining, for entertaining, I like to keep it quite simple. Um, I don't like when things are too pretentious. So I don't need a massive ice bucket and the, you know, the whole display. I like when you're comfortable in the space. Oftentimes you go to people's parties, you're nervous to sit somewhere, you're nervous to put a glass down somewhere. This is not the home for that. Here you really truly can just relax and enjoy the party. It's kind of a colonial style home. Um, in this, I live in this gated compound and all the homes are these kind of a colonial Mac mini mansions, I guess. It was, I think that's how people in Texas kind of lived. And I'm anti-colonial homes based on the fact that I'm from a, an English colony called Jamaica. So when you walk into the house, it's this beautiful modern delight. I like to call it a Gemini home because you get one thing one minute and when you come over the other side, it's a complete different thing. So this is what I like to call a Gemini home. Well, I, I like to start with modern art. I'm obsessed with artists like Alexander Calder, Wassily Kandinsky, the Russian painter. Um, so that always, you know, sparks the inspiration for anything that I do in terms of design, whether it's jewelry or interior design. Um, I love pops of color, although I don't wear color normally. I literally only wear black. I'm trying to even, you know, sp spur up my collection by putting on a blue denim because I'm literally in all black. When you see my closet, you'll understand. Um, but my design style is truly just modern and comfortable. For me, comfort is so important because you go to some people's house and it's like a gallery. You know, this house is so easy to live in because nothing is too precious. And I think when you live in a home, nothing should be too precious or, you know, or untouchable. I grew up with a mother who wouldn't allow me to sit in one of the living rooms because she was like, no one goes here. You know, this is only for special occasions. At this house, in this home, everything is just to be used and touched and to experience from the art to the, the funky Turge, Turge X Storm chairs, you know. It's, it's truly my style. Again, simple, but functional and hopefully timeless. Off the dining room is the living room. I'll take you there. Welcome to my living room. This space really is just impressive. It's this grand volume and just really collectible furniture. I've been collecting furniture for quite some time and I did not have a space to put it. Luckily, I found the perfect home for all this great furniture. So this space, was quite a challenge in the sense that because of its size, how, did you, how could one make it intimate and warm at the same time? And I hope that I have accomplished that. We place the Le Corbusier chaise next to this fantastic light sculpture. And I adore this light sculpture by Nicolas Buffard because it looks as if the bulb is melting on the steel. Again, beautifully handmade in LA. Real, I found this at Love House New York and just immediately had to have it. I believe they sold it to me off the floor. Um, there's a Vladimir Kagan couch, which is sitting next to a Charlotte Perriot pair of stools. Again, just 
archival great furniture pieces that will stand the test of time. I've always wanted Nicholas Kagan couches because I used to watch them on first dibs, so I'm always on the app looking and bidding. Been very fortunate to get two pieces in this house. I paint, uh, most people don't know that. So this piece I painted myself and I thought it was the perfect accent to the home. Um, again, quite a dramatic scale, but it's perfect in this double height, with this double height ceiling. There's a French oak bench, which is heavy. <laughs> that, again, another perfect piece in, in, the, in the living room. So you can sit here and have a really great glass of champagne. And I love that all the patina and the scratches are here on the, the bench, because I think it just gives it more character. A very good, very good vintage find. Um, when I bought this house, there wasn't a pool. And as I mentioned earlier, when, you, when I first opened the doors to this house, I knew immediately this, is the this was the house I wanted because I, I could envision the pool in front of this stunning set of windows. Um, and yeah, we, we built a pool. It was a nightmare to build a pool, but we finally, <laughs> finally did it and uh, it's the perfect accent to this living room. Now the Turkey X Storm chairs from 1980, a very impressive find. I found it from a dealer in Amsterdam and normally they come in these funky colors of like reds and yellows and neon green and uh, the dealer was able to reupholster it for me here in black and I know they look insane to sit on but I tell you they're so comfortable. Everybody comes over and they're nervous to sit on the furniture. I'm like, guys, really, just sit, because it's so comfy. And as I said, I encourage everybody to come here and like relax and have fun. And we have raves. Every Thanksgiving, we have raves. And you know, you can stand on the table because nothing is too precious here. Everything is livable. And that's the beauty about this living room. It's almost like a gallery, but it's a warm, friendly, fun gallery with really just fun furniture. And this is why I love this living room. So currently I'm working on my villa. I'm building a villa in Jamaica. I guess my home in Jamaica. And we're doing a lot of research on Oscar Niemeyer because the house in Jamaica is also a brutalist minimalist home that I'm doing, but heavily influenced by the tropical climate. And Oscar Niemeyer is a, is God, an idol in architecture and uh, yeah, we're doing loads of research on him. So in the house in Jamaica, we're planning to do a spiral staircase. And every day I come down, I manifest this spiral staircase because I must have this spiral staircase. I must have, you know, this very Oscar Niemeyer-esque home. And I love, I just love Brazilian architecture and furniture. And uh, that's mostly what's sitting on my coffee table. And there's loads of jewelry books on the table as well. This is new, the Jamaica vibes, because I'm Jamaican and I love showing people my home, my culture, my country. So there's also loads of reads about Jamaica, because for me, it is paradise. Um, there's also a, monop a, a Monopoly board here on my desk, because my friends and I, we tend to love to just be kids all over again. And I found this years ago, actually at CB2, and it's all dusty at this point, but. I, again, just love to have these kind of a things on my coffee table because it's friendly and it's warm and you can really just interact with your guests when they're here. Again, loads of art books and jewelry books. This is one of my favorite um, jewelry designers from Turkey, um, Sevan Bikachki. And this is the kind of stuff I keep on my coffee table, you know? Um, yeah, this is kind of really it, you know, just, stuff that inspires me. And when I sit here, I can always go through magazines and be inspired. I was doing my master's and I was like, why am I even in school? It's not my passion. And I was taking a bus from, I was modeling in New York, let me start there. So I was modeling in New York, finished a job, heading back to DC. And a guy saw me on the bus while I was reading a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The stranger grabbed the book out of my hand and I was like, what is going on? And handed me a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He said, read this book, it's going to change your life. It's literally that random. I never saw the guy again. 
So I read the book for about two months and the book changed my life. I discovered that my burning desire or my burning passion was to find jewelry. And I went to 47th Street in New York and started making jewelry and I never looked back. You know, I've been very fortunate. Rihanna was the first celebrity to wear a piece of mine. I woke up one morning and it says, Rihanna wears Mateo's zipper necklace. It was on Just Jared, if you remember what Just Jared is. And things just took off. We launched at Macy's, we launched at Nordstrom's, and things just continuously, just organically developed because I never set out to have a jewelry brand. The goal was just to make really some jewelry for myself at first and see how it went until a full business developed and formalized. And then American Vogue came along, French Vogue came along, and I was top 10 in the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, and things just took off. So that kind of sums up my, you know, my rise in, in fashion. And in 2019, I started researching more and more about interior design, and then that pivot over into interior design. And, you know, I just fell in love with being creative in general. I think that's really just my passion, is just creativity. Off my living room is the kitchen. This is one of, well, I'm probably gonna say this quite a bit, one of the most favorite rooms in the house because I love to cook and I cook every single day. So it's important to have a kitchen that is functional as well as beautiful. And I like to think this is the epitome of functionality and beauty. I changed the stone in this kitchen about three times. I think my contractor wanted to kill me after the last time. Um, first, we tried quartz, we tried Kolkata marble, still didn't feel right. My friend from Elle magazine, she was like, Google Panda marble, Google Panda marble, and I discovered this. Found a stone dealer here in Houston, and I begged and pleaded to get the last slabs of stone so we could wrap the island and the backsplash in this stunning marble. And what I love about this marble is that there's hints of gold running through the veins here. And again, being a jewelry designer, I love gold and I love a precious gemstone. So this to me just feels precious, although it's still functional, but it's so beautiful and it's so soft and smooth and well polished and doesn't stain easily, which I love. I found this fantastic light fi um, fixture from Lumen. And what I love is this beautiful gold leaf finishing the inside of this dome. Again, I don't love a hood. I don't love a hood over a stove, personally. Um, so this was the compromise. And again, just a beautiful kitchen. Kept the cupboards which were original to the house and did these beautiful brass finishes that we found from Rejuvenation. And again, just a fantastic touch. We added a wine fridge because we like our wine, or there's nothing there during the week because we don't drink during the week. <laughs> so we try to not have any wine or champagne there. Um, but no, this is the kitchen and I absolutely adore this kitchen and I spend a lot of time here. When I'm hosting people, it's always Jamaican food first. So we are doing a coconut curry shrimp. We're doing an oxtail. We're doing a rice and peas. We're doing a fried plantain. We're doing an escovitch fish. I am Jamaican, so you're always gonna get the best Jamaican delights. I want you to always feel and taste a part of my home. So there's always Jamaican food in this kitchen. So when I bought this house, this kitchen was stuck in the very early 90s. There was a, a counter here with a bar. The, the, the island was so tiny. It was literally from here to there. We just knocked everything out and really opened up the kitchen. I think it's important that when you're entertaining, you, you should always be able to see your guests. Um, and so we knocked everything out, expanded it, really opened up the space into the volume of the living room. And it's, again, an entertaining paradise, this kitchen. Because while the guests are sitting here drinking and laughing, you can also partake. So this kitchen is an entertainer's dream. On top of the island is this fantastic ceramic from Mexico. I have a fantastic dealer. I cannot stop using the word fantastic because I do love the people that I work with here in Houston. He goes to Mexico and always bring, finds or bring, brings back some of the best 
you know, ceramics that I can find. There's some by the pool and there is also this piece here, which I really, really love. And what I love is that the date is also here. And this is from 1870. I, you know, I think it's all, it just adds some warmth to the kitchen. Plus we add a bit of color with the green because as you can tell, I love black and white. I think every kitchen should have a breakfast nook or a breakfast living room, I like to call this section. Um, again, another beautiful find from a vintage dealer in Chicago. I found a Vladimir Kagan. This is from 19, the 1980s as well. I wanted to inject color in a meaningful way instead of plastering all the walls with a main color. I just felt as if art and furniture was the way to go. So this beautiful red just accents this black, white, and gold kitchen. I was in Botswana a few months ago and I found this chief's chair, which I, again, love. They shipped it to me. I was on a trip with the beers and I went to the diamond mine and one of the members from the mine took me to their local town and I found this chief's chair. What I love is that there is a heart sitting down in the middle. And it's an interesting piece because it's two piece in one. Let me, let me move it here so you can see. Because if I pull, see that? It all lays flat. I have never seen that before. Had to have it, loved it. So this was my find from Botswana. And I want to thank the Botswana people because this is actually genius. And I love a good chair. Love a good chair that is punishing and brutal, but beautiful. And again, there's also a heart, so I love that. <laughs> there's also some Houston art. You know, it's, I find it quite subversive and funny, but the perfect piece of art for the kitchen. It's by a local artist. Apparently he painted this while he was in prison. Don't know how, where he got oil paint from, <laughs> but I thought it was quite, you know, sensual, sexual, and charming, and the perfect piece of art again for a kitchen. I would love to show you the main bedroom, but before I do, I'd like to show you this gem of a powder room and my office. And welcome to the first floor powder room. This is my little, I like to call it the blue box. I'm, I love Eve's Klein, and I love the Eve's Klein blue, and we finally, we're able to get the perfect color. I think there's about 10 coats of paint on here and many trips to Sherwin-Williams, they finally custom made the right, the right blue for this room. And it's beautifully accented again with another Michael Anastadides for floss like fixture. And again, we love a beauty mirror. My friends, they love Instagram and they love social media. So when they come here, this is their perfect way to do their little videos when they're in, when you're visiting me. Um, but a fantastic room. We love to bring in jewelry notes into the interior design space. So this room is almost this, it's like a gemstone, you know, this beautiful lapis kind of a room. And we, again, adore this powder room. And, I, and most guests, they never want to go upstairs, which I love because I like the privacy. So this is perfect for them to use. Let's go take a peek in my office. Let's go. Welcome to my office. This is a space I use every single day. So for me, it's important that it's number one, peaceful. Number two, functional. I always speak about functionality because I truly use every space in this house. Vintage French oak desk. It's really a dining table that we turn into the office desk because I love to just spread out while I'm working, because I'm sketching, I'm packing jewelry, I'm shipping, I'm doing all sorts of things. It's important to have just a really mass space. This photo of my best friend, Eugenia Washington, she's wearing our Baroque Pearl earring, and I shot this myself, actually. So I do some photography as well. And it's important to add all these personal touches to the space. So I'm very proud of this office, because there is a mood as well with this, photo with this photograph. Um, that I find quite beautiful. The two chairs for when my assistants are here, it's these Fade Two Good Rolly, ch Rolly chairs from London. Again, really love, I think there's about three of them here in the house. Um, I know they're a bit low, but they're so comfortable. Like you never, you just, you know, just, you just sit in there and it's this cozy, 
moment while you're working. I think it should be comfortable while you work. Why not? So, love these chairs. And again, love the desk, love the chips, love this beat up feel. Because again, nothing is too precious in this house. Um, and we always have fresh flowers. But this is the office. This is where the magic happens for Mateo New York. Well, everything in the house always ties back to jewelry. And I think you'll see that as we go through. When you come through the foyer, there is a fantastic light installation by Michael Anastarides, the Spanish um, lighting designer. And it looks like a chandelier airing, actually. Um, so when you come through, you will see it. And it's also uh, this airing, this airing or this light is also in my collection, uh, my jewelry collection. And you, you tend to see a lot of jewelry notes in the house as well. There is a kind of a lapis blue powder room. Um, in my house in Lisbon, there's an emerald green, a deep emerald green office there. Um, in this house, there's also a, the black room, which represents the black onyx, the gemstone. And there's hints of you know, gold all over the house as well, which ties back into yellow gold. And I tend to wear quite a bit of yellow gold. Um, so no, there's a lot of jewelry tied back into the house. For me, it's super important that you know, both marry, marries each other um, because it is my daily life. And I also want to be inspired when I'm at home and this house, I'm always inspired. Now I'll take you upstairs to see the main bedroom and the guest bedroom. Let's go. Ah. On the landing of the second floor, we have two really fantastic pieces of art. Um, art is so important to me. And then having black art is again super vital to my well being as a creative. This piece is from an Italian painter who happens to be black actually. He's Ethiopian and Italian. His name is Gem Perrucini. And to me, it looks like a modern day Renaissance painting. Absolutely love. He has grown tremendously over the past few years. And I've had this piece since 2020. This piece here is by. Titus Kapoor that I got from Gagosian in New York City from the gallery. And it's, a redact it's a re from the Redactive series. And it's about Ferguson. Again, very strong and powerful piece of art. I'll take you inside the bedroom. My bedroom is a, is a place of honestly peace and serenity. Um, Cause being an entrepreneur, you're always stressed, you're always overwhelmed. So I like that when I come to the bedroom, it, it, should, it should almost be like a spa. So here we have a cloud bed from Restoration Hardware. And I know everyone's probably tired of the cloud series, but this bed, honestly, you lay down, pff, off in the clouds. Really fantastic. And I paired two solid marble side tables and this Atolo lamps in the brass which i really just love again anything with a bit of gold anything with a bit of jewelry i, I just love these little touches in the house the artwork is a water painting by pepe mouzon he is he is or was Celine Dion stylist and he hand painted that for me during the black lives matter movement and i thought that was so sweet of him and it's sitting right here in my bedroom i have a linear rosé togo this i snatch from the other set in lisbon because in lisbon i have the full set out in the house there and i sold one piece to go here and i sit here and i read and i have coffees in the morning coffee in the morning and we also have a built-in coffee station here in the bedroom because i hate having to walk downstairs in the morning for coffee um, and yeah this is my bedroom you know, very simple. We just added the Noguchi lamb that I bought in Tokyo. Because um, I love to also incorporate things that I get on my travels. But this room is, is simply just beautiful. What I love most about this home is that it's peaceful. You know, I love that you can sit here and there's the calmest silence, if there's such a way of describing it that runs through this house, it's soothing. This place also just hugs you and that's what I love this house. I'll take you to the master bath and closet. This bathroom, again, is very spa-like. I, em I keep the emphasis on things being spa-like on the second floor because downstairs is so much of a gallery 
this is this cozy, warm, sensual space that you just want to, number one, lay in a bathtub and have a glass of champagne. Um, you know, take a really long, hot bath in the steam shower. Um, we really kept everything super simple. Did these beautiful slate floors with this beautiful textured finish that we love with these beautiful chrome finishes. There's a piece of art here by a Philadelphian artist by the name of Shakith, who finished his studies at Yale University. And this was actually my very first piece of art I've ever bought. Fantastic artist and uh, was very grateful to acquire his piece when I was 30. Um, so there's a special emotional connection to this. Um, and I'll take you inside of the closet. I mentioned I only wear black. So don't be alarmed when you come in, there's literally only black in this closet. <laughs> and there's a massive uh, collection of Hermes that I've been collecting for ages. Um, so yeah, it's just black and Hermes and vintage watches. And I literally, my mom forced me to have a few white shirts. She was like, you're not going to a funeral. You must have some color. And for me, there's one color in here. And it's like this Camp des Garçons shirt that I wear to the beach. Beyond that, everything is literally black. And I collect some vintage watches. And yeah, I love black. You know, I think black is, black is sexy. It's powerful, but it's also quiet. It's also bold, but it's also humble. Does that make any sense? Just, this is the beauty of, about, about black. And then you look timeless. You're always chic. I love a good dinner watch. So I have a collection of dinner watches, actually. This is a vintage Cartier. I believe it's from 1969. And it has a double bezel, found this in Paris, of Rue de Rivoli, and uh, hustled the woman that was selling it. I paid nothing for this Cartier watch. I think I paid like 3,500 euros, if I can say that. Very good steal. Um, I have a Norwegian friend, and he takes me to another dealer in Paris as well. This is a vintage Vacheron, and I love to wear this to dinner. Nothing like a, you know, a clean button down and a chic watch. Again, timeless, sexy, and decadent. <laughs> the last room I'll show you on this floor is the guest bedroom. And welcome to the guest bedroom. This room, again, is very spa-like. I know you'll be tired of this word, but this phrase by the time I'm done. But this room, warm and very cozy with little touches of modernism here. This beautiful mirror, that I got from Canada. It's all made of concrete and has this beautiful marbleized finish. Another Faygood, another Faygood um, rolly chair. This beautiful vase, which was gifted to me from a friend, Melody. And I believe it's from um, Adam, see, forgot the name. Anyway, <laughs> I should remember it was a gift. What is wrong with me? Oh, this is Jonathan Adler. God damn it. Anyway, so yeah, that's how I got this vase. <laughs> that's how I got this vase. A friend gifted that to me as a housewarming gift. Um, I have some family portraits in here. That's my dad with his first Cadillac. He likes to tell me he was the first person with a Cadillac in Jamaica. And this is me at my christening. Um, restoration hardware bed and beautiful Belgian linen. And I believe, and this beautiful lamp that I got from Lulu and Georgia. So that was some online shopping that was done well because I really love these lamps. They're very heavy. So solid marble and the Stingray side tables that I absolutely just love the texture. I love anything that's like tactile and has a really rich finish. And yeah, this is the guest bedroom. I try not to make it too comfortable because I don't want my guests to stay that long, but they really, really just love this room. And again, this room is like a warm hug and it's right off the yoga studio. So there's this beautiful combination of fitness on this side of the house and comfort. What makes it come alive? God, I think it's how you live in it that makes it come alive. And I, I think it's so important to truly just love being home, especially after COVID. Home has become such an integral part in so many people's lives. And I think living, truly living in your home is of utmost importance for a house to come alive. To me, home means a peaceful sanctuary. 
Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.